you want to talk about an offensive explosion? <laughs> So many a tenor cap this afternoon's game of tenor Philly Phillies in the Miami Marlins as the Phillies defeat the Marlins by a final score of 10 to nothing. Uh, as we secure a series win at Lone Depot Park, something that we haven't done since April of 2019. I mean, my goodness gracious, it's been over three years. Now, I guess before we get into this video, please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please turn on the notification bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. Uh, so the Phillies had not won a series down in Miami uh, since I was a freshman in high school. This put things into some perspective. Uh, I just graduated high school, uh, so uh, my goodness gracious, it's been it's been that long uh, that uh, we have not won a series down there. And that's just pathetic. I mean, that is truly just pathetic. We have a chance to sweep tomorrow uh, at one forty, but we have won a series against the Marlins. We have won a series down at Lone Depot Park. It did start this uh, in January two thousand nineteen, but I didn't start recapping games on a consistent basis every single day and since like June of 2019. So this is the first time we have won a series down in Miami uh, since I've been doing this. I mean, think about that. I mean, just think, just think about that. This is crazy. As we get the scoring summary here in the top of the fourth inning, JT Real Muto homers on a fly ball to center field. Derek Call comes around to score a two-run shot from Muto, eighth of the season, and the Phillies now lead it two to nothing. So Jay T gets his OPS now above the 700 mark. Uh, this guy has been playing such better baseball as of late. He's really, really started to turn the corner. He's going down there Miami, a place he, you know, is very comfortable, uh, right? You know, playing in that ballpark all his career prior to coming to Philly. Uh, so I think he definitely feels comfortable down there for sure. So 2 nothing fills off of Max Mayer. Then we pick it up here in the top of the sixth inning. The big fellow, Reese Hoskins, now just one shy of 20 on the year as he homers on a fly ball to center field into the bushes. Uh, it goes, and the Phillies now lead it three to nothing. Yeah, so the home runs are certainly there today. Am I right? I mean, the long ball, the long ball was certainly there. Uh, so Reese Hoskins, the second fill to join in on this off of Max Mayer. Uh, that was a slider. As I said, this didn't really slide very much. Three nothing Philadelphia. Then we pick it up here in the same inning. Didi Gregorius singles on a line drive to center field. Bases loaded, two out. Uh, Nick Castellanos and JT Romuto come around to score, and the Phillies now lead it five to nothing. Thing. Uh, so, D.D. Gores, have a day. Uh, it's clutch to every guy's single. The base is loaded. And of course, he would later go on to hit his first home run uh, this year. It took him 167 at-bats. Uh, so, uh, yes, indeedy. Uh, yes, indeedy. Uh, so, the you know, situational hitting was certainly there today. Uh, you know, we still did strike out eight times as a team. But, I mean, when you score 10 runs and 15 nets, I mean, who cares? Offense was just on fire uh, this afternoon. Now we pick it up here in the top of the eighth inning. Bryson Stott doubles on a ground ball to left field the other way. Uh, of course, we also own the scouting report. I mean, this is a guy that loves to hit to all fields. As Derek Hall comes around to score, it's now 6 nothing Phils. Uh, so Stott with his sixth uh, double of the season. Uh, so he had a really rough night last night. He had a great series in Toronto where he homered twice in just uh, you know the two games we were there. Uh, so he was able to drive and haul tonight to make it six nothing. And pick it up here in the same inning. Alec Bohm singles on the line drive to left field. He actually pulled the baseball there. Uh, Some you don't really see too often. As I talk about you know quite frequently with Alec Bohm, a guy that the tendency to just hit everything the other way. It's everything the right field. As Bryson Stott comes around to score and the Phillies now lead it seven to nothing. So we're just piling it on. This Marlins pitching staff, it was no joke. Uh, you know, the Marlins are kind of in the, the playoff hunt maybe a little bit. They're only four games to below 500. I mean, the Marlins are no joke. Uh, they're certainly not a, you know, a great team, but they certainly are terrible either. Uh, so 7 nothing Philadelphia. Now we pick it up here in the same inning. D.D. Gregorius. Uh, homer Sunday fly ball to right field, uh, and uh, he finally did it. His first home of the season took him 167 at bats, a two run shot that also scores Alec Bohm. Nine nothing fills. That was not a cheap home run. I mean, not not at all. I mean, uh, he really uh, crushed that ball. That was a towering shot. 
uh, at the uh, State Fair. Uh, so uh, how about that? Didi Gugos, I'm sure that was a sigh of relief for him. And of course, he is playing on a contract here. Uh, so he's about to be a free agent. The Phillies will definitely not be renewing his contract. So he knows that uh, he definitely has something to play for. Uh, so I'm sure that felt pretty good for him to get that off his chest. He definitely needed that one. Uh, and, uh, you know, now hopefully the whole months will start to come. Now, I think it's one of those things that just kept going on. I think it just was getting his head even more. And now uh, that he knows that he has gone deep this year, I think that just they're going to start to come more easy now. I think that pretty much goes without saying. Then we pick it up here in the same inning. Kyle Schwarber joins in on the action. Oh, oh boy, did he knew this one. I mean, he almost did it earlier in the ball game. Uh, hit a deep drive down the right field line that just went foul. I mean, I, I oh my gosh, I was so annoyed in that ball. Uh, you know, unfortunately, did go to the right of that foul pole. But this one, he was able to keep fair as he over on the fly ball to right center field. Uh, his 29th of the season, leading the National League and just uh, behind Aaron Judge for the Major League lead. Uh, so, uh, my goodness gracious, he's getting ready for the home run derby. He's still hitting 211, but uh, boy, did he need that one. Uh, so, 10 nothing Philadelphia. Uh, so, Kyle Shore we're joining in on the action uh, with JT Muto, Reese Hoskins, Edie Gregorius. Uh, so uh, the Phils were really hitting. To, the Phils were certainly swinging the bats this afternoon, and that would be a final 10 to nothing Philadelphia. Uh, as uh, we take the first two games of this three game series, uh, 15 hits for the Phils this afternoon, as the Marlins only had five. Uh, so a cash over at Elias, but only it was a big one. The home run the right center field, also striking out twice. I mean, one of those strikeouts, that was just a terrible call. Uh, you know, the fastball on the outside part of the plate, that was not a strike. It was clearly outside of that box, and yet it was still called a strike because the umpires just don't know what they're doing. I tell you, man, I love that home run, 29 on the year. I mean, of course, he is going to be too shy for Mike Schmidt's. Uh, you know, record most of ones by Phil for the All Star break, but hey, I mean, the fact that he got this close to it certainly is impressive. Uh, you know, that is certainly impressive for sure. Before I go any further, man, I had a great time with uh, Sports Live, the ATL Eddie. You know, live streaming the game it was on there for like two hours. Uh, you know, I had a great time. You know, we were just sitting there. I was doing the play by play for the Phils, and he was doing, you know, the play by play for his Braves against the Nationals. This is, of course, the, you know, Braves defeat the Nats because uh, the Nats are just so terrible. We'll talk about the Juan Soto thing at the end. I have to talk about it. Uh, and uh, Reese Hoskins, only one hit was a big one, the home run to center field. Now, uh, 19 home runs on the year for Reese, a 246 average, 820 RBIs. He's definitely not been as hot as of late, but uh, I mean, 44 RBIs over his last seven games. He's in uh, 185. He's definitely, as I said, not really uh, swinging the hottest bat as of late, but uh, it's nice to know that, you know, because Reese Hoskins has had a tendency of this having his home runs all come in bunches, and it seems like this year it's been a little bit different. Not so much at the beginning. In the beginning, it, it wasn't. Of course, he just was always clustering those home runs together, but over the past few months, the home runs have kind of been more spread out, which is a very, very good sign. He's, he's not as streaky as he used to be. And uh, Yohan Camargo coming off the bench uh, to take over for Reese Hoskins since we uh, just won this game. You know what I mean? It just was, you know, what's the point of keeping, uh, you, know, uh, you know, our starters in there? Uh, Nick Castellanos also collecting a knock on that double to right field uh, to hit off of the wall. Uh, so uh, he has been collecting a lot of one hit games though, I will say that. It's not like he's, you know, collecting, uh, you know, like three hit games, two hit games. This has been a lot of ones, but hey, I mean, he's still, uh, you know, been better recently, I'll say. Uh, and uh, he also scored one of the Phil's 10 runs this afternoon, also drawing a walk, which you don't really see too often. Uh, but the average still sits at 251, but the OPS now climbs up to 675 after the double and the walk today. So it did reflect in the OPS. Dubera came in to take over for Castellanos as he also collected a knock. Uh, and uh, Derek Hall, uh, two knocks this afternoon, uh, also scoring uh, twice. Uh, so he certainly had a productive afternoon out of the cleanup spot. I really, really like him in that cleanup spot. I think he definitely belongs there. J.T. Rimuto, after having a three-hit night last night, comes back out and has a two-hit afternoon, uh, hitting that home run to center field. 251 average down for Rimuto. He gets his average now up above 250. So good for J.T. Really, there's good for J.T. A 7 one seven OPS. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. His last seven games, he's hitting three twenty uh, with a three thirty three OBP. Uh, and over his last fifteen, uh, you know, which is basically spanned two weeks, two ninety six with a three thirty three on base percentage, and over his last thirty two forty eight with a three hundred nine on base percentage. So it's clear the numbers reflect that he has definitely been on the uptrend. I talk about it. it seems like I've been talking about it a lot over the past couple weeks. How much better JT has looked. Of course, the games he's going to have two step forward, one step back. But hey, I mean that's pretty normal when you're trying to work your way out of a rut. So it's Seems like he's starting to get a swing back. I mean, he had a great catch today, leading into the Phillies dugout on that pop-up, and uh, it, that was just incredible. I mean, uh, it, he looked—he has looked like the BCIB. I mean, something like a light has went off. 
Uh, he has really, really looked like the BCIB, and he's really not that far away from working his way back to being the BCIB once again. Uh, so it's really not that hard for him. I mean, he's a very athletic guy. Uh, it's just a, it's just incredible. Career high 840 OPS in 2020 in that shortened season, and 821 OPS in 2018, which was considered his best season even last year. 782 OPS. So 717 OPS there for Muto. It's getting there. It is certainly getting there. And do not give up on this guy. Uh, and uh, Garrett Stubbs came into the ball game uh, to pinch it, and he uh, struck out uh, as he took over behind the plate. And uh, Bryson Stott, as I talked about, who uh, went hitless last night, was able to collect two knocks this afternoon. That RBI uh, double to left field and ground ball. Alec Bowman, and he was a big on that line drive, single to left field, uh, also drawing a walk, which you don't really see too often. Uh, 273 average for Bohm as he's back in the lineup. Of course, he did dislocate his finger in St. Louis, and uh, he is finally back. Uh, and uh, Dean Gregorius, two knocks this afternoon. The uh, two RBI single to center with the bases loaded with two out. That was a really clutch in. He hits a two run shot to right field. So four RBIs for Didi, a 240 average now, and a, a 660 OPS. So it was right around like 637 last night, and he uh, climbed that high already. Uh, with just, just with the uh, the single and the home run, uh, of course uh, the single isn't really going to have that out too much, but the home run certainly is. And uh, Matt Veeling uh, gets to start on center and bats ninth as he also collects a knock. Uh, and uh, Ranger Suarez five innings, four hits, didn't allow any runs, no walks, in four strikeouts, he four seventy array. Uh, so he certainly did his job. I mean his stuff was looking pretty good. Now seven and five on the year. What did I say? What did I say last night? I said Ranger Suarez will either go five or six innings, six at the very most. Uh, so he only goes five. I said, I mean, they're going to ease him back in. I mean, he's coming off of an injury, uh, so they're not going to have him you know, go very deep. And he didn't go very deep, and I am okay with that. I am perfectly okay with that. And Shibai came in, got a hit. Of course, he did strike out three, and then all the outs he recorded in the inning were all strikeouts. Uh, as he struck out the first two and then allowed a hit, and then he uh, struck out uh, one to end the inning. And uh, Connor Brogdon, a clean one, two, three, bottom of the seventh inning. Nick Nelson, they clean one, two, three, bottom of the eighth inning. Uh, and then uh, Joe, Joe Romero, welcome back. Uh, a guy that we have not seen early last year. Uh, you know, he had 11 games with us last year, a seven year ERA. So, of course, coming off of TJ, welcome back, Joe, Joe Romero. I've not said that name in a while. Uh, so he came in and uh, pitched a 1-2-3 bottom of the ninth inning and also struck out one. Perfect time to use these kind of guys. Not using like the Brad Hands, the Corey Knables of the world. You're using level guys uh, when you're up uh, 10 runs. Uh, so that's certainly a good time to use. I don't know why in the world we set down Mark Appel. Uh, you know, I understand you should have sent down Moniak. That was the right move. But, uh, you know, you know he was doing pretty well. I mean, uh, I understand that. It's a short sample size, but w like why? Uh, why? Uh, I, I don't really understand why. Why would you? Why would you not send a guy like Michael Kelly? Why in the world would you send a guy like Mark Appel? So Phils win, uh, secure a series uh, win. A 141st pitch tomorrow. Aaron Nola looking to bounce back. Uh, not the best start last time in St. Louis. Five and seven, a three, three five ERA going against uh, Trevor Rogers. Four and eight, a five four two ERA. Uh, and uh, of course, then we got the All Star break with the Home Run Derby on Monday and then the All Star game on Tuesday. Uh, I will not be covering either. Uh, so the second straight year, uh, I usually like to take some time off of the week, right? I mean, I do a video every single day for months on that. So I think I'm, I feel a little entitled, I'll say. I hope that doesn't sound too, uh, too full of myself. Uh, you know, because I work my butt off every single day. I think I feel pretty entitled to take the week off. Uh, you know, I probably will be doing a live stream. I'm either going on Sports Live ATL live stream Monday or Tuesday night, uh, but I will not be covering it on this channel. I mean, I mean possibly I'll do a live stream in here, but uh, no video recap or anything like that. It will be a mid-season review on Monday. Juan Soto turning down a 15-year, $440 million contract offer from the Washington Nationals. I mean, wow. I mean, just wow. That would give him an average annual value of $30 million a year for 15 years straight. I mean, uh, I, that was definitely Scott Boris making that call. Or maybe not. I mean, uh, Juan Soto, he doesn't really seem to really love playing in Washington. We heard the rumors about how he doesn't really love playing there, and I think he wants out. I mean, I think that move right there clearly shows that he does not like playing in Washington, D.C. Uh, so uh, it looks like he's falling in uh, Mr. Harper's footsteps, and the Nationals are, are now open to talks again. I mean, uh, and they, they lost Bryce Harper. They lost Anthony Rendo. They did the same thing with Jay Turner. They tried to extend him. They couldn't do it, so they traded him to the Dodgers. And now it looks like it's going to happen with Juan Soto. I did say that possibly he could be baseball's first $500 million player. That is certainly possible. I did see him turning down that 350 offer, you know, this past winter. This is crazy money. More than Mike Trout money. I mean, Mike Trout, you know, 12 years, 
430. Um, this is 15 years 440. I mean, this is above the best player in the game uh, over the past decade. I mean, this is probably the most you're going to get. So, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you get. Please share this bell. Please like this video. Comment on this video. Share this video. Check out the social media. Link in the description section. At Philly's at Stoop Media. Instagram, Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. At Beyond Stoop Media. Call or text 267-225-3992. Email me. Philly's at Media at gmail.com. So, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Luke, and I'll talk to you. Let's go, Phil. So, see you guys.